One of the best things about Guild Wars 2 is how different all the classes look and play. They all have really distinct mechanics and concepts which become even more interesting when you hit the expansions and you can elite specialise into whole new subclasses like the Ranger eventually being able to become the Druid, a healer. So without knowing all the possible combinations, where the hell are you supposed to start? As a new player it can be really hard to figure that out with the game out for so long now and most of us veterans talking about a bunch of tricky stuff to understand. Going back to earlier launch guides often doesn't help much either, how much of it might be out of date by now? So in this video, I'm going to explain some basic things about the game to help you make your decision. Everything I'm saying is up to date. I'm pretty much born out of an understanding of how Guild Wars 2 works and how Guild Wars 2 wants to be. So hopefully this will be a good resource to link to new people for at least the next few years. So let's get stuck in. I'm going to try and help new players figure out what class to play. Oh, and I do apologise that this video footage is going to be basically staring at the character creator the whole time. But that's what's relevant, I suppose. So I'm going to cut straight to the chase here. I assume you've already had a quick look through the professions. You can see that there's nine of them and you have a gist of their theme. So I won't spend an hour here going over what's obvious just to look at them. Oh, what a surprise. The Necromancer is here. It's a dark magic vibe caster class. We get it. You'll probably pick up on the fact real fast that basically all the big fantasy archetypes are covered with these nine. You might be tempted to click on the one that most resembles something you've had fun with in an other RPGs. And let me say out of the gate, that's not a bad idea. The one thing that's probably missing from this set is the idea of a healing type mage character, like a priest sort of thing, which yeah, if you want to go for the holy light idea, you'll be forced into this dude, the heavy armored guardian. While there are a ton of ways to play a supportive buffer or healer in Guild Wars 2, that exact theme I don't think is quite fulfilled, at least not yet. The other one that's close might be the Druid I mentioned already, only Ranger has access to that so if you're thinking super far ahead, maybe go for this, but I'll explain more of that in a moment. First thing that I really want to help you with for these classes and to understand, beyond what's obvious, is that they're actually split into three categories. There's Heavy Armor, there's Medium Armor and there's Light Armor. The game also uses these terms adventurers, scholars and soldiers, which is a fun way to think about it but really isn't meaningful once you get beyond the character creator. What does matter is that the category or profession you pick will define the kind of armor items you can wear and you will never be able to go outside of that. Guild Wars is in general very free and easy with build changes and so on but this is a hard line in the sand. So heavy armors look different to medium armors and they look different to light armors. You've got three sets. For example, you could make your ranger dress the same as a thief if you really want because they're both in the adventurer category, but you could never make your ranger dress like an elementalist who's a scholar. Technically, with the game's microtransaction store, you could wear an outfit, which is like a full armor set that sits on top of your real gear and overrides everything. Those outfits don't care about your profession at all, and you can make your characters just the same, but I sort of don't want to recommend you think too much about that, because hey, who likes microtransactions, and that's not totally in the spirit of the game. So think about your armor class if you really care about fashion and playing with cosmetics, which is admittedly a large part of the game. Another thing to think about when it comes to armor is that when you really get into the game, you'll find you can start swapping gear items like weapons and jewelry and stuff around from one character to your other characters on your account via your bank, for example. And that can be really helpful to quickly gear up, you know, an alt that you might have just picked up. And that's all fine and good for most items, but not armor because of these restrictions. For example, your elementalist mage will never be able able to wear all the amazing heavy armor you crafted and found on your warrior. Your elementalist can wear your warrior's weapons and it can wear their jewelry, but not their armor. At the same time, if you have a guardian on your account or a revenant on your account who are also both soldiers, then they can wear all of that stuff. So one little question to ask yourself, are you planning on making multiple characters super soon? Do you do that a lot in MMOs? Because if so, Consider maybe having all of your first classes 
be in the same band. So that then when you're swapping all your gear around, things are much easier for you and you're never restricted. I myself considered myself to be a light armor player for many years and that was of a decent benefit to me. You don't have to do this, you could spread out if you like so you experience more different skins and more distinct playstyles I suppose. But it's something extra to think about if you're being anal about this decision, which might be one of the reasons you're looking at this video in the first place. As far as the actual gameplay difference between any armor types, well, there isn't really much of one. I suppose light armor does mean you take more damage, but take it from me, it's basically irrelevant. What you might like to know is that the different professions here can have different base health points, and this can have a huge impact. There's a class from each category with super low health. That's the Thief, the Elementalist, and the Guardian. These guys will feel much squishier to play than the others. Now don't get me wrong, it's not like they're hard mode or anything. These classes are compensated for that squishiness in other ways. Like maybe they get lots of access to defensive buffs, maybe they get a little bit more healing, or maybe they get more dodge roll access or blinds and so on. But they do generally feel a bit squishier. I would describe these classes as more active in general. So if you think you're gonna get high lag or you have low frame rate or you're just a little bit slow with games, maybe steer a little bit, little bit more clear of these guys. I remember when I first played a warrior, after hundreds of hours on Elementalist, my first class, I was amazed at how much tankier I felt just because now I had so much more health. Uh, for what it's worth, the Necromancer is the other class with a massive health pool, and all the other ones I haven't mentioned are just kind of in the middle. So those are the big ones to think about. Next thing to know, and I really can't stress this enough, is that when it comes to solo, regular gameplay, there's really no such thing as a bad decision here, guys. ArenaNet, the studio that made Guild Wars 2, kind of built the class system and the build system from the ground up to offer a high degree of autonomy for any individuals playing. In the original game, basically all the content was party based. You had to have players with you, or you had to tediously load up your party with AI companions to get anything done. And they didn't like this. So for Guild Wars 2, they swung in the other direction. Every class is made to have a high degree of autonomy, and after all these years, that fact's never changed. I don't think it ever will again. Like, the build craft is really rich, you get loads of choices, but there are basic building blocks always in place that mean you shouldn't struggle. For example, you'll always have a healing skill with you, so you can heal yourself instead of having to wait for someone else to heal you. And instead of needing to wait around for a tank, you have stuff like being able to dodge roll in invulnerability frames that means you can take charge of your own survivability. Now, that's a decision that's had its ups and downs, but we won't get into that here, maybe on another video. The next thing I really want you guys to know is that there aren't any hidden costs on build swapping or on making alt characters in this game. Once you pick a class, you can mess with how it plays, what weapons it's using, what skills it has equipped, what traits it's using, freely and regularly. They actively encourage you to do this and you'll get a lot more fun out of the game if you're going for that. With that in mind, if the class you've picked isn't really clicking with you, try to mess with it. If it's still not clicking with you, well, you could delete it, I suppose, and go back to the drawing board, or play it alongside something else. The game makes alts very accessible. There's no rent fees or upkeeps, there's no gear treadmill either. So once you've got a character with some fun gear, with a nice build, it's not gonna go anywhere. Leveling isn't an insane grind in Guild Wars 2. Getting basic, comfortable gear isn't an insane grind. And this is before talking about level 80 boosters, which I generally recommend new players should try to avoid as long as they can. Most active Guild Wars 2 players at this point even if they're not veterans, are probably juggling at least two different classes. Usually I think five is the sweet spot because then you can cover all the different playable races, but many people go further, they'll even get them all if they can. Realistically, your biggest problem is gonna be running out of character slots because you want more classes, not having to worry about your very first one. In such an alt-friendly environment, you can relax a bit about your first class. You can relax a bit about trying some of the ones you're only vaguely interested in. This freedom extends to the elite specs too. 
So what this means is that most professions are free to flex in and out of whatever playstyles they like. Take the Necromancer for example, who might like to do a melee power damage build on the Reaper spec. They might like to control massive areas of the battlefield from range as a scourge with conditions. Or they might like to play super tanky as a regular Necromancer surrounded by minions. You can swap around all of those playstyles for free. Basically, you can't make a mistake. And that brings me on to point number three. And that's to know that every class basically tries to be a complete package. There's no such thing in Guild Wars as a ranged class. Everyone can be ranged or melee. It just depends on what weapons that profession equips. Do you want to have double axes and a greatsword to be a pure melee warrior? Well, cool, you can do that. Or do you want to have a longbow and a rifle to be a pure ranged warrior? Well, that's also fine. Everyone can do damage over time builds, everyone can do flat damage builds, it's there on all 9 professions, even hybrid stuff if you like. For the purpose of solo gameplay, a huge amount is viable, don't worry. When it comes to more specialised late game group gameplay, which is basically optional, most classes can also perform most party roles. So what do I mean by that? I mean like Trinity type stuff. Can we all be a healer? Can we all be in the front line? Can we all be doing damage? And if a certain profession can't fulfill one of those roles just yet, because there are some gaps, you'll be sure there's probably an elite specialization coming down the line that would add it. Like take the Thief for example. The Thief has mostly been relegated to doing damage and crowd control in teams the past few years. But next expansion, they're getting the Spectre subclass, and that can opt into being a party healer instead. This can be a little bit tricky to talk about, as metas shift in and out of play, and who knows what specific builds the community will dictate are the ones allowed in pugs. A meta analysis video is probably something very different to this, and not relevant to you at the beginning of your journey. But I'll also note, nothing in Guild Wars, even at the Elite Endgame, is so hard that things are impossible to play. If you have a bunch of mates or guildies to go in with, and they'll let you play something weird, then you could certainly pull off any number of weird combinations that you wouldn't usually see. Let me stress one thing real carefully here, because I want you guys to understand it. Don't be scared of being totally screwed out of party play just because of your profession choice. That should never happen. See, there's comfortable space for everyone, and that's because the big end game content is set for 10 man group sizes. There are only 9 professions, and the studio generally discourages class stacking. So, one of each, and you've got someone left over. Now to be fair, sometimes the balance team has messed up and there's been a lot of class stacking where we've doubled or even tripled up on the same profession. And some endgame content is 5 man, like the Fractals of the Mists, where obviously things are a bit more crowded. But when these situations arrive, it tends to be that ArenaNet will try to fix it with future balance, no matter how long that might take. The game used to be a lot worse for this, but not so much any longer. So yeah, while you might not be able to get your ideal role in a party, you will get in the party on that profession. And because of what I mentioned a second ago, swapping builds is free and cheap and encouraged, it kind of is neither here nor there. For example, as an engineer, you might not have an easy time playing as a backline healer using your med kit in random groups of players because that's not meta, but there will be space for an engineer in general, you'll be able to do something else for the team. And finally, once again, this is group content I'm talking about, which as far as Guild Wars 2 is concerned, is largely optional. You can enjoy most of the game without even thinking about any of this, and most people happily skip it altogether. So, from all this information, hopefully you've already got a sense of what I'm about to say, and I sincerely believe it to be true. There aren't many traps with Guild Wars 2 classes, so just pick what feels good. I'm serious. Go on vibe, go on theme, go on what you're used to from other games, and if the class isn't clicking by around level 20 or so, just try another one. When it comes to choosing based on theme, there is a little bit of a trap though, and I do have a note for you guys. Have a look at this class here, the Revenant. Now from this you might get the impression that it's all about being evil and grim and undeady, but that's not actually true. 
This class was the last class they added, and it's a bit more complicated than the others. It's about communing with great legends of the past from this game's lore, and depending on which legend you pick, changes the aesthetic and playstyle you'll experience. So yeah, some of them are evil feeling, but there's also a pacifistic legend that gives you brilliant, bright, golden, flowery skills, and there's a dwarf legend that can turn you to stone. In the first expansion, you'll get a legend that lets you commune with a crystalline dragon. And again, that doesn't really feel like a very evil theme either. Sadly, you can't really see any of that on the character creator itself, can you? But I can help you out, and this is a tip that might help any of you still stuck on what to go for, even on the grounds of theme. See, each base class in Guild Wars 2 is made up of five trait or perk lines. They're called specializations. Those five lines make up basically the full identity of the profession. And when expansions come around, new lines get added that are so big and rich and fully expanded that once you've equipped them, it's like you're a whole new subclass. So if you know what the lines are, you can kind of get a really good sense of what the whole class is about. This is where a lot of the build crafts from as well. So I suggest, now I've put a link in the description to the specializations page on the wiki. You guys can click that for extra information, for artwork, and all kinds of fun things. Uh, so you can go ahead and read them all at your leisure. I'll also quickly run through them here on the video for you all. Uh, starting off with the adventurers, we've got Ranger. Ranger is made up of marksmanship, skirmishing, nature magic, beast mastery, and wilderness survival. So those five lines, those ideas, turns into the Ranger. For Engineer, we have a line about explosives, so if you like the idea of someone detonating and using, you know, C4 and all that, Engineer's got you covered because of the explosives line. There's an inventions line, an alchemy line. If you wanted to be an alchemist, it's hidden within Engineer. There's a tools line and a firearms line. Thief has deadly arts, critical arts, acrobatics, trickery, shadow arts. The Elementalist is very simple and easy. There's fire, air, earth, water, and a fifth special line called Arcane. The Necromancer has spite, has curses, death magic, blood magic, which is all about vampirism and so on, and soul reaping. Mesmer, which is kind of an obscure special Guild Wars flavored class. If you want the true Guild Wars experience, you should understand that Mesmer was a very special thing added in the first game. You don't tend to find it in other fantasy RPGs, and it's kind of like home ground. It came into Guild Wars 2 almost as fan service to the existence of it in the first game. Uh, for the Mesmer, you've got domination, you've got dueling, you have chaos magic, inspiration, and illusions, they're all about getting into their enemy's head and summoning phantasmal things that strike at them. Kind of like a summoner class almost. Then finally over to the soldiers, we have warrior with strength, defense, arms, tactics, and discipline. The guardian has honor, zeal, radiance, valor, and virtues. With the revenants on corruption, that's the demon, Malix. There's retribution, the dwarf, Jarlis. Salvation, the pacifist, Ventari. Invocation is kind of a general line, and Devastation, the assassin Shiro Tagachi. So hopefully here in the specializations and looking at that wiki page helps you guys really nail into exactly what you want to do. I, for example, love pet classes, so I'm immediately looking at the ranger who always has a pet with them for their special mechanic and even has a line dedicated to it called Beast Mastery. That's where I know I'd be going. Lastly, just to round the video out, I do have some general classes and build ideas that I know a lot of people have in mind and you might want to know where you can get those experiences in Guild Wars because in a lot of places, multiple classes cover the same idea. So look, I'll show you what I mean. Let's say you want to play an AI build. You love having minions, You lo like I just mentioned, you love having pets, stuff like that. Where are the best places to go? Well, my recommendations here would be the Ranger, who is all about pet stuff. Uh, you get one specific pet as a ranger and you can augment it in a ton of ways and you can control it and command it around in a ton of ways. You can name it, you can collect pets out in the overworld. Pets as like an individual thing is the ranger thing. It's also a very easy class and a great place to start with the game. But this video is not really about gameplay tips. The other thing the ranger gets are actually spirits, which are other kind of summon AI companions you get, though they don't move. There's also the necromancer. The death magic line allows you to augment loads of minions and you can summon undead bodies that run around with you. Not quite skeletons like you might expect in other games, but you can summon undead minions. There's even one that looks like a ghost, which is my favorite. 
For the elementalists, you can actually summon elemental familiars. They have really high uptime, you can command them to use special abilities, and there's loads of different versions of them based on the element you're in when you conjure them. So there's earth golems that can defend you and be really tanky, water elementals that can heal you, fiery ones that do damage, air ones that stun. Definitely a lot to play with. In current balance of Guild Wars 2, it's not bad at all. In previous years, it was a bit iffy, but I think they're a really fun pet archetype now. And then the other caster class, the Mesmer, is all about summoning clones and phantasms, which are sort of very short-lived summons that exist only for a very brief moment, but can do damage and feels a little bit like a pet class in some ways. As a minor note, you can get some thug allies as a thief, but they have quite low uptime. And as well, if you like the pet stuff, Whatever race you pick, you can get AI companions from the racial skills too. As of this current video, they're all balanced to be really weak, so you can kind of ignore them, but they are there. And there's even some minions you can get from gear too. Another big archetype you might be looking to play is like a backline mage that explodes big AoE damage. Well, of course here, you can pick the elementalist, you can take a staff, you can use fire magic. It can be okay, but I do warn you, in Guild Wars 2, it tends to be people play in melee a lot, and that idea of being ranged, that fantasy doesn't pull off too often. So, if you want to have like these big ground targeted AoEs that you're nuking enemies uh, in from far away, try to combo these kinds of builds with AI, like what I mentioned just above, so that the AI holds the aggro and you can stay back at range. It's tricky to do in Guild Wars, so do be aware. Necromancer is also a great choice, do not overlook it. In many respects, in the competitive formats, Necromancer has kind of been the big damage nuke of Guild Wars 2. Um, but in PvE, you can rain down lots of magical hell as well with weapons like Staff and Scepter 2. If you want to play a bunkery type character, I'll warn you that Guild Wars 2's combat tends to be you kill a creature and then you move on. And you move on so fast that these, idea these kind of builds where you stick down into a place can feel a bit tricky. But I would say if there's any time to enjoy them, it's as a totally new player. So don't overlook them. Engineer is probably the best place to go. You can create loads of turrets that defend an area. You can drop med packs and stuff. Uh, Ranger has spirits that I mentioned. Warrior as well. You can drop these big banners that support everyone in quite a wide area. And if you play a warrior, you're going to get used to using those banners in the group scenarios too. If you want to play a really frontline tanky type character, every single class has one of their specializations essentially dedicated to defense. But here I have a very real warning for you. There isn't much space for that in general Guild Wars 2 gameplay. If you're in the open world, if you're doing normal story, if you're not playing group based content, I really don't recommend that you pin your whole game identity to being a tanky guy. Because what's going to happen is you're going to pick a bunch of traits and skills and gear that makes you tanky. And that's cool and you can do it. But it's going to make the game really slow and really boring. So I do warn you away from that. Usually you'll have like AI companions in the story or something. But they're not going to be strong enough to do the fighting for you. And the idea of holding aggro and stuff, it's just not really there in the game as it currently stands. So be cautious. When you get to the party based stuff at the end, there is definitely an idea of being a tank and being on the front line. Weirdly, this caster class became a fantastic tank through one of its elite specializations, so don't overlook it. But for general gameplay, be careful. Nonetheless, if you're really, really desperate for it, I mean, you can't go wrong with any of the heavies. The Guardian protecting his allies, the Warrior shrugging off his damage, the Revenant with the Jarless Dwarf, as I mentioned. On note, Necro can play pretty good with that defensive tanky fantasy too, uh, through blood magic, where you sort of siphon the health away from other people, and you siphon the life force off of them, and you can be pretty good there. I'll also say a lot of like hybrid-y half-tanky builds are really good to play the game on, on basically every class. And finally, if you want to play a really speedy character, well, first you might just think Thief. Thief has a ton of teleports and a lot of, you know, speed and movement. But generally speaking, all classes can give themselves movement buffs at this time, whether that's a passive that has you moving pretty quick all the time, or even the boon swiftness that makes you run fast a lot of the time. Warrior can be really quick too, but basically everyone has a lot of awesome stuff for movement. Movement is one of the most fun things about Guild Wars 2's combat. Like an elementalist can ride the lightning, an engineer can use their rocket boots, a mesmer can create portals. It's one of the things Guild Wars does very well. So, uh, you know, look for something else as you pick a class. Speaking of portals, that's one special thing that the Mesmer has. 
If you love jumping puzzles and you love being really altruistic and helping people out, don't overlook Mesmer. It has this cool tool called Portal where it can teleport whole zergs around and you can use that to skip people through jumping puzzle content and they'll thank you and it's kind of a fun experience. So uh, that's something not to overlook. So there you have it. That's basically all the nuance I could imagine giving you about picking your class. I hope the general vibe of the game is clear to you guys now and you can be comfortable making your first choice. Really, you're not going to get punished in any major way in this game. Going with your gut may sound like a cop-out bit of advice to people and it may genuinely be bad advice in a lot of MMOs. But for Guild Wars, I honestly really do believe in it. And hopefully some of this other context I've given you can help you a little bit there as well. Now, I haven't really talked about how to level these professions or gameplay tips here. There can be a pretty big difference in how easy or fun they're to play. But I think such a big topic probably deserves its own video. If you guys want to see that, I'll be watching how well this one does and whether it really helps any new players out there. So please, if you want to see more like this, don't be scared to share it out to your friends, people just getting into Guild Wars 2. And hopefully I'll be back with something new very, very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. So here, to any legitimate new players that have watched through this, uh, thanks again. And on the background here, you can see a link to the playlist I've made with all my other new player guides and anything I might have made since this video originally came out. You can check out my Discord and streams in the description too.